It began as the Otago Rally in 1976 and still plays a part of the national championship. Today, though, it's the classic component of this revered rally that attracts drivers from all over the world to test their mettle on its blind crests and outright speed. It's the jewel in the classic crown of Kiwi gravel competition. And this year, local rally exponent Mark Lawton has swapped his driving gloves for the microphone to bring you some of the stories from the Stadium Cars Otago International Classic Rally. 40 years ago, cars like this were brand new and they were fighting it out for the national championship in New Zealand rallying. Now they're classics and this weekend they'll be fighting it out for the Otago Classic Rally. Interestingly, last year this very car won the entire event in the hands of Hayden Patton, our Kiwi WRC star. Now to put that into perspective, he won the entire event including beating the modern vehicles. Hayden's back again this year, but he won't be competing in the Classics. He'll be in the National Championship field in a specially built Honda. Tony Gosling, you're driving the car this year that won the event overall last year. Pretty big shoes to fill. Yeah, you're absolutely right, and I think um, like obviously last year was something a little bit special for this rally, and um, as far as our performance this weekend, I think we'll um, try not to think about that too much. The Stadium Cars Otago Classic Rally has a long tradition of overseas world rally drivers. This year is no exception. With me, Marco Martin, what brings you to Otago Rally? Yeah, first of all, I got invited here by the organisers, and I'm very happy um, that I... Um, I'm here. Um, it's it's a fantastic place to do rallies. Uh, I've done a um, few rallies on the North Island with uh, WSC and um, first time to do a rally on the South Island. And um, as always, the roads are fantastic and um, you know it's going to be a great fun tomorrow. It's not only about the fast international drivers, it's also about the really fast Kiwis. And Derek Ayson, you've won this event three times. Nobody knows it better than you. Oh, look, Mark, the, the roads are just superb, so we're looking forward to a, a really good battle this weekend. You've seen the roads in Reiki over the last couple of days. What's your take on the roads? The roads are outstanding, quite fast, few, um, put a lot of greasy brows, but um, they're in pretty good condition, actually. Jeff Judd, what's so special about the Otago Classic? Oh, it's so well supported by, you know, so many people and they get the overseas stars here every year. Plus the roads are some of the best in New Zealand, but it's just an iconic event. Driving this beautifully prepared Group B Mazda RX-7 is Marcus Van Klink. Now this weekend, Marcus, this rally has double meaning for you. Yeah, it's um, number one of the NZ Rally Champs and uh, we've won it three times now. And, um, yeah, so you know, round one's very important for us to finish, but uh, hey, Otago Classic is another great event as well, so two events in one. Regan Ross, you haven't won this event. Is this year your year? Oh, I'm really hoping it's my uh, my year this year. There's been a lot of gifted uh, wins to some of the other competitors here over the years, so um, this year could be my year. <laughs> Ten Aussies have crossed the ditch for what's considered to be one of the best classic rallies in the Southern Hemisphere. Jeff David, you've been on the podium here. What does it take? Oh, it's a very, very hard rally, but coming over here and having the fellowship with the New Zealand uh, compatriots in the rally is what brings us back all the time. The roads are great, but it's the people that really uh, add the, the wonderful warmth to the event that makes it special for all of us. Another Australian that's made the trip across, Stuart Reid. You've been a front runner at Otago before. What's it going to take this year? Um, I think the field's very strong. I'd be happy just to finish uh, in a new car. You'd be silly to um, throw it into the, the trees. So we'll just feel our way through and uh, watch the, the battle unfold in the front. One thing's for sure, a winner will be found from one of these cars assembled in the Octagon here tonight. And come Sunday, we'll know just who that is. Along the way, we'll bring you the stories of some of the drivers and their cars. Fantastic. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. There's plenty of history here at the Otago Classic Rally. It began in 1976, and believe it or not, three drivers here this weekend were in that very event. A much younger Gary Cliff was one of those competitors, driving a car that today would hardly be considered as competitive. I was driving a 1976 or 5 Datsun 1200 Coupe, pretty new in those days. And tell us about the event um, compared to how it is today. Uh, the event was pretty competitive. Um, Trevor Crow, if I remember rightly, won it in a Datsun 1200 Triple S. Uh, in that era we were doing the Paul Moore rounds, some 23, 24 hour divisions. 
Um, so, yeah, they were quite tough, but the cars weren't as fast and or as fragile as they are today. The name McCrosty has long been associated with the Otago Classic. Duncan McCrosty is regularly featured in top five finishes, but this year it's his cousin Dean, who usually co-drives, who's behind the wheel of his own car. Yeah, I've been co-driving for Duncan at Race to the Sky. Um, I've done a bit with Phil Mason and uh, another guy from Aussie, but it's about time I had a go. So this weekend you're in the RX-7 here, what will the weekend bring for you? Hopefully we'll get to the end and I might finally beat NB. He keeps ribbing me about uh, having to beat a senior sit, so it's about time I did it. Crosty did beat Big through stage one, but the escort driver, who also competed in that very first event, was ahead by the end of special stage two. It's a long way from the pressures of trying to win a championship. These days, Ian Big's here for different reasons. It's my hobby. It's, I've never had anybody pay for my rallying. I've always paid for it myself. I've, I love it. Uh, I've done it for 43 years. The real battle, though, is happening up front. No surprises in stage one. Marco Martin with a massive 16 second lead. He was followed by Regan Ross. And third was Marcus Van Klink, clearly having some problems in stage two. This is 7 left on crest, 200. Crest, next one, crest is 5 right, straight up the crest. Coming up 5 right. 5 right. Yeah. 5. It seemed to be a problem with RX-7s. John Silcott coming adrift on the same corner. Just came down this crest, it's, uh, I think it's quite well known, but just too much pace on and uh, shit, the gods must be smiling again because we got away with it, but it was a massive moment. Slowing her up, slowing her up. Yeah, yeah, I've got it. Yeah, seven got it, come on. Seven right into seven left, come on mate. I got a big tail telling off on my co-driver and we off we win again. But uh, yeah, hey, it's one of those things, we've got away with it and uh, we'll keep pushing on. It's going very good. Regan, three stages down, second overall, but also leading the championship. How have you found the morning? Uh, it's been a good morning, yeah, challenging um, the first one just with the dust. Uh, we're just crawling, but obviously everyone will be telling the same thing. Any specific moments in there? Uh, we had, had one rather large one just come into a virtually a whiteout situation. You lose all depth, perception, and uh, you don't really know whether you're going left or right straight or anything. And then all of a sudden uh, I'd noticed that the, the corner was going off that way at a rather great rate of knots. Two right, sorry. Yeah, almost went into the trees like I was going about crawling pace sort of thing. Dust wasn't the only issue for Jeff Judd. Well, we had no intercom for stage two and three, and in three, you're trying to drive blind a little bit of like practice for the silver firm, but there's a, a big long uh, left hand at the Titans onto a cattle stop, and that was a lot of fun. Brake problems have kept Derek Hayson out of the top five positions through the morning stages. Despite beating his own record on special stage three, plenty of others were going quicker. Yeah, I think Regan, he was pretty quick through there as well as Marco, but a wee bit of a problem with stage one, it was, um, it was quite dusty in the trees, but the rest of the last two have been pretty good. Five left, 150. Well here we are at service and we expected Marco to be at the head of the field. A lot of the other competitors, Marco, are complaining about dust. Yeah, I think this morning the dust for everybody behind the first car was really bad. We are lucky to start with the historic so with a nice four or five minute cap, so we didn't have any dust, so it was easy for us. And everybody else suffered, I imagine. But it was good for us to have a nice calm t uh, stage to just learn the car a little, bit, a little bit and see how the notes are working so yeah the could run and it's getting more and more fun at every stage I think. right five left over crest 80 six minus right slow over crest 50 crest late five left and uh, four right and actually the, the four I drove uh, when I was a factory driver it was also a very nice car to drive so I think there's a lot of uh, it's a lot of common uh, feel that they're actually sort of in, uh, confidence inspiring uh, cars, both of them. There's a new name in the fastest five through the morning on his first outing to New Zealand. Ben, you've had a successful morning running a fourth overall. 
Yeah, look, it's been it's been good. It's encouraging. We've been pushing, but haven't been doing any Superman stuff. But um, been catching a lot of dust. Everyone was a write off in the first. Jeff's had problems, so we had dust in the in the last one quite bad as well. But I'm happy where we are and enjoying it and loving the roads. How do you compare it to the Australian rallies? You know, there's flowing crests on the top of the hills. The things already doing 180 kilometres an hour, and then he calls it the right five flat or something like that. And um, you know, you got to commit to it. Another Australian that's been doing well this morning. Grant, how's your morning been? Great, good. We had a dusty first stage, but everyone was in the same, same boat, so that's OK. And stage two and three, good, no problems at all. Just probably a little bit of lack of commitment from the driver. Other than that, good. The tow rope on Gary Cliff's Datsun is an ominous sign. We have uh, damaged the clutch in the stage before, about halfway through, and couldn't get any gears. Managed to find one, limp out, but we don't have any spares for it, so uh, we're withdrawn. Dunedin's always been an unlucky rally for me, so um, the very first one I rolled the Datsun, um, I've blown a couple of engines up in this car and i had it 15 years. I've never blown any or done any mechanical damage anywhere else in this car except for the Dunedin rally. Ex-Pat Kiwi Stuart Warren has returned home from Australia to compete again for the first time in more than a decade. It's actually come back better than I thought it would, you know, like being so out of it such a long time I thought it would be scary to even get it sideways but it seems to be flowing not too bad. Yeah. You used to be a regular campaigner and, and competitor in the Otago Rally. Must be great to come back after so long. Oh no, it's good. Like even when we gave up back in 02, um, it was always one of the objectives to come back and, and do this event. Corey, competing in your first rally this weekend, yep. and I see you on the phone there. You texting results back to the family? No, just a wee update about one one moment in stage two. It wasn't a problem, we just uh, went into a ditch a wee bit hard, off camber, loose corner, but we got away with it. That was harder than I remember. One of the most unusual cars you'll ever see in a rally today is the venerable 1800, but then Jim Gregory is not about conforming. Everybody's got escorts, Statsons, everything's in classic. Why not build something different, have some fun with it. Tell us about the engine in the car, Jim. The engine is the basic 1800. Uh, gearbox is the same. The engine's been ported on the cylinder head and a new, a different camshaft, a race rally camshaft. So they're commonly known as a land crab. Does it hold on the road like its name? It does. It certainly doesn't have any body roll. It just goes in and comes out. There's no problem. We thoroughly enjoy it. The afternoon run takes in some of the most spectacular Otago roads, including the infamous Danzies Pass, the original road linking the Waitaki Basin with the central Otago goldfields, but the significance is lost on our overseas guest driver. Oh, that was difficult uh, with a one bus recce, uh, so many flat crests, uh, but if you don't know which one is the one you meant in the roads, it's uh, quite scary at times, actually, right. so I didn't enjoy that, actually, to be very fair. 50. Five right items to three plus long, long over crest. Twenty three minus left. No issue for Brian Stokes, who was one of the three drivers to have competed in the original event back in 1976. Oh, it's a great piece of road, you know, there's a bit of everything there and, and um, up and down and rough and plenty of views and <laughs> challenging bits, but yeah, no, it's a fantastic road. Come the end of the gravel stages, Marco Martin has a commanding lead of 47 seconds over Regan Ross, who is also leading the classic championship battle with third place Marcus Van Klein. One of the biggest surprises is Tony Goslin, who hasn't shied away from the reputation Hayden Patton gave this car Very 12 long, months left, ago. Plus, fast, OK, 50. Well, Tony Gosley, fourth yeah, overall. Yeah, we, we, we're pretty happy with that. We thought if we could get in the top five, that'd be really good. And that last three kilometres is probably the most fun I've had in my whole five life. Turn. Five left at junction. Five left. 30. Fast five right, 120. Six left and six left plus 30. Five right plus 60. Flat crest, 150. Six right in, kinks 80. Six right in, kinks 80. Six right plus and flat seven left, 120. Finish, six right minus, 120.
was cool. Fucking hell, that was awesome. I think we went alright, mate. That last couple what, what, of what, quarters. What the holy <laughs> shit. So, away to the special stage yeah. now. Um, put on a show, will you? Okay. I mean, you're the major okay. sponsor. You've got to put on a show. Well, yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll think about that on the way to Dunedin because you can lose a lot in there. <laughs> Final stage of the day is the tarmac one, and the crowd certainly come to watch it. You can't win the rally here, but you certainly could lose it. Tony Johnston is flying the flag for the V8s this weekend. There's nothing like the sound of a V8. It's unmistakable and certainly one that gets the crowd's attention. There's a lot to this rallying and not everybody comes out on top. Derek Ayson suffered brake problems in stages two and three. And Derek, that unsettled you for the rest of the day? Yeah, it did, Lordy. Like, um, we certainly had, had no brake pedal for those two stages and it was just a bit disconcerting. So we um, gave them a good bleed up at the service park and, um, and they were definitely better for the next two. But it just sort of plays on your mind a bit. You know, when you jump on the brakes, they need to be there. And I guess you just... Always a bit cautious, so um, which did affect their times a little bit, but um, the last couple of stages went pretty good, so we are quite happy with that. You did come back in stage six, though. Yeah, I think we got second to Regan on six, and then again on the, down the tarmac stage, so Regan, he's on fire today, as is, as is Marco, so, it's, so the, the pace is just outstanding. Nine more stages tomorrow to conclude the Stadium Cars Otago International Classic. More stories in a moment. As we begin day two of the Stadium Cars Otago Classic Rally, the outright charge is being dominated by Marco Martin. But there are also two other classes, and Miles McElwain is leading Class B. We're certainly not the fastest, we're, we're just here for a good skid and, and, uh, and don't do any damage. Uh, there's a couple of other blokes that are a little bit faster than us, but they've uh, had a little bit of bad luck with uh, broken parts and whatever. Now this year we find you with a new co-driver, tell us about that. Yes, well I wanted to, I wanted to double my race budget so I've uh, included my wife as a co-driver this year. How's she going? She's going very well and she's very good at signing checks. Jake, you put on a great show at the Super Special stage last night, but you were last to line up, tell us why. Uh, in stage six we broke a uh, bottom arm, sheer, a shore rose joint off and fought us off the road, so the service vehicle came in and we fixed her up and rushed back to town. and. With just in the nick of time, we got out and had a bit of fun. So prior to that, you were leading Class B. Must have been a, a bit of a blow for you. Yeah, I was pretty gutted, but, um, you know, it's part of rallying. Well, the smallest class in the Otago Rally is Class A, under 1,300. Peter Fritt, you're leading it after day one. Yeah, no, we've, we've had a great run again yesterday. Um, very little car problems. Alternator bracket broke, but that was all. Didn't hold us up. Um, we've, we've got a good competition with Greg for a while but unfortunately he had a spring come out of his distributor so um, yeah it, we it certainly puts us in the lead and uh, we'll be today we'll just be uh, cruising along trying to consolidate that. Greg what happened yesterday? Yeah we're going along quite well and uh, the car cut out, uh, had a look, had found out the distributor had a fault, fixed that up and then in the next stage we're going along hit a cattle stop and we almost did about a 30 degree nosedive after the cattle stop. Marco Martin's not the only high profile rally personality here this weekend. The man sitting alongside the Estonian has co-driven for some very good drivers himself. Stefan, tell us about some of the drivers you've sat beside. Well, I'm lucky enough that I sat with a really good driver in the highest level as possible. So I did 13 years with a Belgian driver called Bruno Thuy. It was my first time with him here in New Zealand back in 1995. But then he was a bit older than me, so I switched to a younger driver called uh, Francois Duval. I spent three years with Francois, a really fast driver. And then uh, I met Chris uh, Atkinson at uh, Subaru, and I've spent uh, most of my time with Chris since uh, 2007. How are you enjoying the ride this weekend? Uh, very good. Marco is driving really, really well. I'm very happy I could do a rally with him because we've been teammates for two years at Ford in 2003-2004. Are you liking these roads at Otago? Yeah, definitely for me New Zealand is the best country in the world to, to do rallying and uh, I feel in love with the country and the roads here for sure, it's the best. 
The morning stages around Middlemarch have been more than challenging. Jeff, not the start to Sunday morning you were hoping for. Tell us what's gone on. Ah, you know, we had a few clutch issues in the last stage. So about a kilometre in, uh, we lost the clutch and we're now trying to see whether we could get it working, but we can't. So now we're going to see if we can put an extra battery pack in and then kick it over on the while it's in gear and see if we can go out and do the last uh, couple of stages this afternoon because we'd hate to miss Curry Bush. For the first time, Marco Martin didn't win a stage. Didn't work so well, I think. From the first corner, I struggled to cut the right gears and uh, then I lost the kind of motivation or concentration. I don't know, it's just going really bad. Regan Ross had his own challenges and wasn't able to capitalise with a stage win. A bit of an off, through a fence and into a paddock. Would have only lost a short amount of time, but unfortunately the gate was locked and they had to break the chain to get out. In the process, he lost four minutes, handing the lead in the championship to this man here. Keep going. Unfortunately for Regan, he had a bit of a sightseeing through a fence, so he handed us second place or first place in the championship, and uh, now we're second behind Marco uh, for the rally. So, yeah, things are going really well. Regan Ross wasn't the only casualty of the day. Derek Hayson sidelined with electrical problems, knocking him out of contention for a podium finish. We thought we had it sorted just with a distributor cap would come a bit loose, the back clip on it. Um, so we fixed that, retimed it, but it's something a bit more major than that. So a bit of a shame, but um, that's how it goes. Ross, though, did salvage something out of the day, taking a stage win from Marco Martin. Brian and Ann Stokes, though, not breaking any stage records, a disappointing end to their rally. Left, into sudden long right. Jeff Judd had an excursion on the last stage. Marco Martin, though, continued his blistering performance, finishing two minutes ahead and taking the top spot on the podium. Crest 100, six left crest, 20, four plus right, 70, five plus left, into five minus right. <laughs> Beautiful stage, man. Yep. Should know it. Thank you, Marco. It was yeah. such a nice weekend. Yeah, I sorry, really sir. enjoyed it. Last. It's amazing, this stage. Yeah, very nice. It's felt like Finland. Fantastic. Really, really good. And the end was the best, actually. <laughs> the last stage was, uh, is, a, is a really, really nice stage. Marcus, second overall for the Otago Classic, but also first in the New Zealand Championship. You're now leading that. Yeah, yeah, no, what an awesome day. Uh, great weekend. Uh, Four nearly pulled off on the last couple of corners here. Hence the flat tyre we're changing now. So uh, get back to control and we'll be a yeah, fine rally. Tony Gosling, third overall, a fantastic drive and doing the sponsor proud. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're pretty happy to be here, I tell you. Even that last stage is just very fast, very cool, and best rally I've ever done. Like every time I do it, it's just unbelievable. So there you have it, our international guest on the top spot of the podium. Second overall, Marcus Van Klink in leading the national championship. And surprise third, Tony Gosling. What a fantastic way to celebrate 40 years of the Otago Rally.